Hello and welcome to Psychegeist, where we talk about the psychology of the era, the science of games. I am your host, Dr. Rachel Cowart, and on today's episode of Jargon Schmarkin, we're going to be talking about cognitive bias. Cognitive bias is one of those terms that we often hear, but unless you took a psychology 101 class in college, you might not be super familiar with what it actually means. Generally speaking, a cognitive bias is a systematic error in processing and interpreting information in the world around us that impacts our decisions and our judgments. The key word in this definition is systematic because these biases occur often and really unconsciously. Put another way and getting a little more philosophical here, a cognitive bias can be thought of in terms of the errors that occur when we create our quote unquote subjective reality from the perception of the objective world around us. Getting a little matrix here. I do love Keanu. An individual's construction of reality, not the objective input, dictates our behavior in the world. And because of this, our biases, our cognitive biases, may sometimes lead to a distortion in our perception and consequently inaccurate judgment, illogical interpretation, or what is broadly referred to as irrationality. Our thoughts and behaviors are irrationally influenced by the biases in our thinking. So what are these biases? Well, there's a lot of them, more than I can talk about in this short video, but I'd like to explore some of the more common ones to give you a better idea of what I mean. A first category of biases I'm gonna talk about are those specific to groups. For example, the in-group bias. The in-group bias refers to evaluating our in-groups, the social groups we belong to, as more diverse and basically better in many respects than out-groups groups we don't belong to. This in-group, out-group bias is something I've talked about before in relation to gamer identity. There's research to suggest that this in-group, out-group bias underlies some of the toxicity and hostility and dark participation in games towards anyone who doesn't fit this stereotypical cisgender, white, heterosexual male in-group. While this in-group, out-group bias in relation to gamers is largely defined by gender, ethnicity, and sexuality, the same dynamic emerges even when the differentiation between in and out group are completely arbitrary. The robber's cave experiment is a great example of this. Again, if you took a Psych 101 class, this is probably familiar to you. In this experiment, 22 11-year-old boys were sent to a summer camp and arbitrarily divided into two groups. Very quickly, the boys developed an attachment to their groups in the first week of camp doing various activities together, like hiking and swimming. During a four-day series of competitions between the groups, prejudice began to become apparent between them, both physical and verbal. During the subsequent two-day cooling off period, the boys listed features of their two groups, and they tended to characterize their own in-group very favorably and the other out-group very unfavorably. This takes us into another group bias called the homogeneity bias, the idea that we think everyone in the out-group is a certain way. Again, a great example of this would be the widely held belief that most video game players are cisgender, white, heterosexual males, which is objectively false, as if nothing else, half of all game players are female. Or taking an example from my own life, the perception that people who play Horde and World of Warcraft are all just mean rogues that want to gank you when you accidentally run past Orgrimmar. Another category of bias would be those that affect decision making more directly. A common one is the sunk cost fallacy, the idea that because you've already invested so much, you only need to invest a little bit more to get the desired outcome. For example, I've already bought 100 lottery tickets and I haven't won, but maybe if I buy just one more, I will. Or I've already spent $5 on this arcade game, surely if I spend another dollar or two, I'll make it to the next level. You won't, Rachel. Or loot boxes. Loot boxes are a perfect example of the sunk cost fallacy. I've already bought $100 worth of loot boxes and I haven't got the thing that I want, but surely if I spend another X amount of dollars, I'll get it. Another decision-making bias is the illusory correlation, which is a bias of judgment of how likely something is related to another unrelated thing. Going back to loot boxes, it could be the last time I bought a loot box, I got something amazing. So maybe the next time I get a loot box, I will also get something amazing. Another example of the illusory correlation would be generalizing that all games in the next gen Prince of Persia franchise are gonna be amazing because the first one was mind-blowingly awesome. I mean, they were all okay, but nothing was like the first one. 
The last category I'm going to talk about today are biases that affect memory. First up, the consistency bias, which is remembering one's past attitudes and behavior is more similar to one's present attitudes. The idea that you've always liked vegetables, even though when you were a child you refused to eat them. Or the idea that Dragon Warrior was the most excellent JRPG. Wait, that checks out. These memory biases happen because our mind and our memory tend to recall the good and suppress the bad. And they also tend to reconstruct the past to make it fit more with the present. And these are just a few categories and subcategories of biases that exist. There are also attentional biases, the confirmation bias, the self-serving bias, and a whole host of others. Our brains are funny, and by funny, I mean awesome, but also sometimes irrational. So cognitive biases, there are a whole host of them. They're just a byproduct of the way we are, the way that humans perceive the world around them and construct information. It's good to know that they exist so we can try to better understand why sometimes our decisions are, well, not the most rational. I have since met people who play Horde that were not rogues. If you like this video and want to see more, please like and subscribe. And until next time, be excellent to each other and always cite your sources.